What's happening, guys? And welcome to our weekly Impact Wrestling Review. I'm Keith, and I'm joined once again by Ro. What's going on, man? Not much, man. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I thought last night's show was uh, was good. Um, a notch under, I'd say, last week's episode. But um, before we actually break down the show, uh, Impact recently posted, I think that they hit 15,000 uh, viewers on the show last night. So this was their highest watched show on Twitch so far. Um, and I really think that can be attributed to a lot of the positive news that we saw this week in Impact Wrestling with them signing, re-signing a bunch of people. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's very encouraging. I think what they need to do and, you know, I think the one thing, too, is it could be um, them going back to Vegas being the biggest difference versus, you know, when they were in Mexico, you know, a lot of times people feel like the show is tailored around those type fans. Whereas when they come back to the States, they can book it how they want to book it. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's very encouraging. I think the key thing is for them to establish a base and be able to build off of it. Cause I think to the one thing that you don't want to happen is they get 15,000 this week and then say next week they get like 6,000. Like right. if they were, if they're able to flirt around nine to ten thousand, then that's good. But yeah, I do think the good and some of the not so good news we got this week probably played a role. But yeah, yeah, um, another solid episode. But you know, no, I, I think especially where the company sits right now, the positive news definitely goes a long way. Um, I think the first or did Callahan sign first last week, or was at the beginning of this week? Ah, oh, man, I don't know. It was just a string of them, but... Yeah, well, he I, re-signed, I, and then Josh Alexander signed a three-year deal. Then Rosemary re-signed, for K, uh, Falaba re-signed, and then we got the news that Madison Rain would be back. Yeah. Oh, well, before even all that, remember, or I think in between, then we even had the stuff with... Uh, the deletion of G- GFW material. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> but before we get into the negative parts, the one thing I will say is, you know, kind of stemming back from what a couple weeks ago when we had the news where uh, apparently Impact had offered Jericho a lucrative deal. Right. You know, as awesome as Jericho is, I think this was the best way to use the money that they were going to offer him. Instead of signing him, because only because I think they would have never seen that money back and bringing in Jericho. No, like you would have had him work. What I think it was r- rumored to have the four shows or anything like that. Something like and, that. And it you wouldn't have made your money back. And it's not no indictment on Jericho, but it's just you know we see where the company is in its current stage and stuff. So I think the best way to use that money is re-signing talents that you know are gonna that you have uh, plans for and that you plan on being around for the long term. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it shows that you trust your talent and you believe your talents. I mean, them just going out and hiring outside people kind of shows that you don't they don't trust their current roster, but by re-signing them, it shows that they do have faith in them. And yeah, I absolutely agree that that is the right way to go. And I think bringing in Josh Alexander was a a great get too. He's a uh, very impressive in the ring. We've seen him a couple times on Explosion and uh, the One Night Onlys and Twitch specials. So a- another good get for them. Yeah, I definitely agree. Did you want to talk about the some of the negative stuff? I mean, I know you had mentioned Madison Rain, but did you want to touch on the GFW stuff or leave it alone? I mean, we can. It was just a move that I don't know. I don't see how it could have played out well for anybody it it just seemed like such a silly move and then to come forward with it and you know th- like i said there's just going to be no good coming from what had happened and then deleting the master tapes of the uh what was it the gfw one night onlys or whatever or global for force something i don't remember what the hell they were called um but yeah no i, I didn't see anything positive coming out of this and it was just uh, Lol TNA, unfortunately. That's <laughs> that's really the only way to describe stuff that's plagued them that's come into play recently. Yeah, it was a lose lose situation. I mean, look, I'm I was confused all by it only because I mean, if you have no need for it and they if you feel like there's no value to it, then I mean them getting rid of it was, you know, a no brainer. But I just kind of thought the reason behind it was kinda, you know, you open the door to be 
you know, we crack jokes on, you know, talking about you needed hard drive space. Right. It's, it's, it's just things like that. Like I said, you know, at the end of the day, I think if you don't like TNA or Impact, uh, and when I'm saying whatever, it's just, you know, if you didn't like it, then, you know, then you're never going to like it. So any little thing they do, you're going to be able to point out. But I just always just kind of feel like with Impact, knowing that they kind of have to do a better job of, um, when, when this news gets out of kind of like I don't know having a good PR person that can clean a lot of this stuff up because yeah, I really because thought that that hard drive one was kind of like really <laughs> yeah and then they don't respond to it which which I get but um you know it just it's encouraging for the trolls to come out and you know keep doing what they constantly do to the company and have been doing for years um but then, moving forward and then with the Madison Rain yeah see my whole thing is like this and the two points i just want to make if you're bringing her back to be a helping hand to some of the the knockouts that you want to develop so like say a jordan grace or kiera or alicia perfect you know she has the resume that's perfect you know as well as i know that's not why she's coming back on board nope. there's probably a good chance that you know, she'll be prominently featured in the title picture. Well, when and, they say Madison Rain, five time <sighs> knockouts champion, is returned to the company, it kind of says it all right there. And I think, and I've seen some people on on uh, social media talk about this, and that's where I was of the criticism too. Was you know she left to pursue the WWE dream? That's fine, you know mm-hmm. I get it. Then she goes to Ring of Honor. She leaves Ring of Honor, I think, because she it was um. She she was displeased with her create her creative direction. Now she comes back to Impact, so it's kind of like you struck out everywhere else. Now I need to come back to my safety net. Now, if that's going to be the case, if she f- goes to the back of the line and has to prove herself and work herself up to the ranks, I get it. But we know that that's not going to happen, given mm-hmm. her ties because her husband Josh Matthews works for the company. So I think it's things like that that can destroy morale of a company like when you when you have situations like that because i'm i'm still trying to understand putting her against sue young how that benefited sue young (laughs) i mean that was the beginning of the downfall for (laughs) sue you know and and it's it's just i think it's moves like that and the company has to kind of open their eyes to that stuff like i said i'm not saying and then and then what they used her she was the name of the former champion coming back right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly that was another thing this company is, in, in no matter what the era was or the regime, they've always promoted something to make it bigger than what it is. You know, you talk about a world champion. I mean, well, they didn't say world champion, but they said former it's champion. Former champion but... Yeah, obviously everyone's thinking a world champion. So all these names people are thinking about, like it's just another letdown. You could easily say, "Hey, we resigned her and then kept it moving," but to make her be the one, so either that was what they intended or who they had in mind didn't fall through. That's also possible. Uh, but I mean, what was it? A redemption last year when she was starting on commentary, and then they said moving forward she was going to be on commentary during the knockouts matches, and then that was the end of it. And then all of a sudden she was back into. You know, the main knockouts feud, uh, if they brought her back in that role of doing commentating and stuff like that and doing behind the scenes working enhancement talent, stuff like that, then then it would be fine. But again, they just can't help themselves. Nope, not at all. Not at all. But um, as far as news goes, anything else really to touch upon? No, I think that's what pretty much all that we had this week. Yeah, I think they... We're expecting a few signings for next week as well. So hopefully, you know, the positive momentum continues through next week's episode. Definitely. Definitely. All right. So we'll get into the show. Opened up with Willie Mack versus Jay Chris. Um, this match was, you know, good for what it was. And then Dave ends up getting involved. DQ happens. And then our favorite, Tommy Dreamer, comes and gets involved. Uh, you know, I mean, we complained the last time he got involved, and it seemed like this could have been an easy spot to bring a roster member in to do that, since now he's already working behind the scenes. Yep. I mean, you always look at it like, and I, I get, you know, he adds, well, when I'm saying name value, you know, people know him and all this and that, but 
they're already showing that it, they're having a difficult time, you know, getting certain talents, TV time. Mm-hmm. So you just kind of feel like a guy like Tommy Dreamer, who's already been able to make a name for himself in the business, like that could have went to somebody else. Yeah. Who is this honestly going to benefit? <laughs> I mean, it sure as hell didn't benefit OVE. <laughs> no, because, yeah, like I said, Dreamer comes out, he fends off the Chris brothers and he grabs Mike. He says for 30 years, he's been trying to right the wrongs of pro wrestling. Then he hypes up, you know, the Vegas crowd and the NFL players in the crowd. And then dreamer challenges OV to a tag match with him and Willie Mack, which I mean, you know, since he is working backstage, he's actually able to make those calls, which, you know, last week we saw Johnny impact make a match. So <laughs> All right. was it last week or the week before? Yeah, no, it was last week. This week. Yeah. So then we got that tag match of uh, OV versus Willie Mack and Tommy Dreamer, and OV takes another loss. And that's really the only thing to come out of it. Yeah, you know they say I know for some the the theme is wins and losses don't matter, but they should, especially when you have a thin roster like they do. And I think that that just just makes it so hard to how to put someone over. Like I get it, not everyone's gonna win, but. It's like OVE, there's no value in defeating them. You know, the way that they have been used. I mean, the only thing that they can hold their, you know, head high on is just pretty much former tag champs. They've defeated LAX. But if you ever wanted to thrust them back into the tag team title picture, I mean, you know, who they'd be at the bottom of, mm-hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, bottom of the barrel, you know, so to speak, just for how, how they've been used. Well, I mean, they're really... In the way they built the tag division, you just have the number one feud for the belts and then the bottom of the barrel, basically, because everything, as far as wins and losses go, it's just one team wins, one team loses. Nobody can build momentum from this. I just worry that, or I would say just the concern that I should that, oh, I should say is you have to always look at it like this. Like, we know with Impact now, like, if somebody wanted to leave or ask for their release, they're not fighting it. They would mm-hmm. grant it. So you can't put yourself in a position where if, to, you know, tomorrow, you know, your top names left and you have no one to really kind of wait in the rings, wings to take the reign. And mm-hmm. I guess that's just a, the concern. Like, I think of, like, when I look at, for example, a team like the Lucha Brothers who work everywhere, like if they get injured or if they departed or anything, you know, then what do you have? You know, LAX is accomplished as they have. Eventually, you got to be think of life after LAX or life after the Lucha Brothers. Right. And that's why it's important to, you know, you know, whether you're using it on the shows or the Twitch shows. Oh, that's another thing we didn't mention about the uh, United as we stand. I guess we can uh, get to that. Mm. Um you need, need to use that as a tool to, you know, see who's next in line, who you can, you know, be used in the, in that type of role. Yeah, no, you're completely right on that. Um, do you want to talk about the United We Stand stuff now, or do you want to wait till we run through the show and then talk about it? Um, I just had a quick. I don't know if you had any uh, uh, big uh, big thoughts on it. I just kind of just had a quick um, you know, point I wanted to make on it. So All it's right, up to you. Go for it. No, go for it. You know, I understand people, you know, you have some of the audience not understanding why, you know, people are making a big deal about charging when it first was advertised as being free. Like, you know, for me personally, I wasn't going to watch one way or another only because I feel like a lot of the, you know, the one night onlys in, you know, in show in the some of the Twitch shows, like I like things that you know, correlate with the actual product. And a lot of times it doesn't. So I just feel like I'm just watching matches with no purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no story behind it. But my only thing was, I think as fans, like sometimes you can't, you don't have to accept everything that the company does. Like when they do something wrong, you got to voice your displeasure. It doesn't mean that you, you know, you're less of a fan or anything like that, because that's right. You don't advertise something and then go change it on the fly unless there's some kind of a, um, you know, like to say, oh, for people who order this, you know, you're getting a free this or I don't know, something to, you know, make it worthwhile. But I think if if as fans, if we keep accepting when Impact does things that we know if anyone else did, we wouldn't tolerate. They're never going to learn from it. They're never going to change. And I think Impact, for the most part, they 
you know, if if a lot of people voice their displeasure about something, they kind of go about trying to fix things. Like you think about with the whole pursuit thing, and then all of a sudden we get get a, get it on Twitch now. Now I know that it's still, you know, that's still kind of a work in progress, but they realize, hey, you know what? We didn't think it all the way through. Here, this is what we're gonna do to kind of compensate for it. So I just think that's just my thing. Like you know, sometimes when Impact does things wrong, like it's okay to kind of be able to say, hey, you know what, that's not right. You know, hold up, you advertise one thing and now you're giving me this? That's not right. Yeah. No, I think a part of it, too, is that I think as a Twitch show being streamed through Impact's page, it would be more of an Impact show. Now it seems to be more of just a collaboration of a bunch of different promotions. So I don't think this really benefits Impact, per se. I think it's just more of a big show for people. And I think that's why it really moved to fight fight was able to capitalize on it and said, Hey, we can charge because there's talent from all over the world wrestling. And you know, that's a good way to look at it. And I think too, that's even all the more reason why some who might decide not to like say myself, not watch is because, you know, I'm, I'm an impact guy. You know, I might watch different promotions here or there when I get a chance, but when I'm watching an impact show, I anticipate seeing majority impact talent like do i mind seeing a couple of of guys or gals from different promotions yeah but not prominently featured i like to see our talents be the ones that are you know yeah and like looking at the main event the lucha brothers versus sabu and rvd i mean you know can you really advertise that as an impact match because the lucha brothers wrestle for everywhere every company basically and that's the biggest problem, because if you look at the the biggest stars right now, or at least the ones that are prominently featured, who has been impact built? Nobody. You know, I mean, you know, <laughs> I guess you say, you know, LAX would probably be the exception. Now, I know everyone comes from different places, but I'm just saying as far as like, you know, I'm just talking about title holders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying as far as like, you know, Johnny Impact, you know, he's from WWE, Lucha, uh, Lucha Underground. Brian Cage, <laughs> Lucha Underground, Taya, Lucha Underground, um, Lucha Brothers Everywhere, Swan, well, WWE. I, <laughs> so I remember, I think Fightful did an interview with uh, Eva Lee from Lucha Underground, and she was apparently originally supposed to come into Impact to work, and then I guess at the last minute everything got shot down. But she made an interesting point to say that everybody was going to work at Impact just because that was their only option outside of Lucha Underground. Now, that being their only option because the relationship or because they couldn't find anywhere else? No, because of the relationship that that was the only ones that Lucha Underground was willing to work with to allow them to wrestle. I guess it was in the States, I think. Because I think most of the guys were wrestling for AAA, which, right, they were owned the uh, same owners as Lucha Underground or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess that would make sense because it just seems like with Lucha Brothers, I mean, Lucha Brothers, I'm sorry, Lucha Underground, you know, they had all this momentum and then all of a sudden it just went poof. And, yeah. you know, I, I really thought there was a, a point in time that I thought Impact was going to buy, you know, purchase L- uh, Lucha Underground and then mm-hmm. we were going to see a lot of the talents, you know, but... Yeah, I mean, you know, my my whole thing is just like this, and this has been something that has plagued the company for, you know, at least almost going on two decades. Like, they do, they haven't done the best job in showcasing their own homegrown people. Like, there's always this need to, you know, capture, like, in other words, building their, building people from the ground up and thrusting them in those roles like it's always somebody who's been who's just made their name somewhere else like right. i think their last success story and even though i know he came from wwe but he wasn't i don't think he was really known by the casual audience was ec3 like mm. that was a perfect success story i mean yeah. they could have had that with eli as well but you know for god knows why management doesn't see what <laughs> a lot of the fancy so um i did i just think that's my thing and i mean i think that can turn people off and like you said your your head the headline of the show is uh lucha brothers lucha brothers versa uh, um sabu and uh and rvd so you got your tag champs who wrestle everywhere facing ecw stars of yesteryear right <laughs> mm-hmm. but all right so we'll move forward with the show then johnny impacts he's interviewed by the investigative reporter um you know they just kind of 
go about the whole title scene. Um, he hypes the tag match for later on, saying that they're going to take Moose and Cross out, and then, you know, the, that's the only way that Brian Cage is going to get his one-on-one shot. Um, and then we have KM and Falaba versus the returning Reno Scum. Um, I thought this match was good for what it was. Uh, ba is obviously the biggest fan favorite in the ring, which, you know, the re-signing of him was a no-brainer. Um, when does KM's contract run out? Was it the fourth or was it the first? I don't know, but I really, I forgot where I read. But I think they it was said, PW Insider had wrote the article. I know they said that uh, it's not a, a matter of him departing, but he's just not under contract, so he's probably just going to work per appearance. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, KM and Fall of Us surprisingly pick up the victory here. Uh, KM rocket launches Thornstow off the top rope into a Samoan drop by Falaba. I like the finish. It was a, a nice spot. Oh yeah, but I, you know, I think the thing with it is all timing because it looked no. like he almost he <laughs> almost kind of threw threw Thornstow too far. And I mean, luckily Fala was able to catch him. But yeah, yeah. that was neat. And you know, even the post match, and I guess the thing that <laughs> I hate I hate with uh, some of the stuff sometimes, and not to be too critical, is you know, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm guessing Reno Scum is just working this set of tapings, but it would be nice if like, this is kind of like a little storyline that they have. And th- this is a, you know, a mini feud that we get, like I'm always on board for things like that. Right. Yeah. I guess I remember you had brought that up that, you know, when you use local talent at wherever they're taping, they can have a feud just then and there and that be it. Um, but you know, good to see KM and fall about getting a win, uh, not facing, you know, the Desi hit squad or somebody else. Um, odd though to hype the return of Reno Scum just to have him lose. Uh, I don't know, just one <laughs> of those, just one of those weird things. But I mean, you know, the guys are a tag team. I don't see why they wouldn't bring them back. There's obviously use for them and room in the tag team division. Yeah, but <clears throat> is room? Is there going to be room to showcase them? See, and that's why I think the whole importance of with the whole explosion uh, appearing on Twitch. While that's great. I mean, are they going to revamp it? Or are they going to leave as is? You know, if they're not going to revamp it, because that w- is that really their only tool. Because we even see on the Twitch shows or the one night on one night onlys, like they're not using those to really build talent. Like, and that's something that they used to do, you know, way back when, or at least discover talent from. So, like, that's the thing about bringing them on board. Like, yeah, you're going to have them, but are you going to have a role for them? And you know, to what capacity? That's true. No, that's a completely fair point. Uh, we see Glenn Gilberti. He's walking backstage. He runs into Ethan Page. He's asking where the management office is. D'Lo Brown ends up walking out of the management office. Gilberti walks in. They tell him that he's a week late. He gets made fun of. And then he's, they tell him that he's been hired as a production assistant and is told to get him them coffee. So, you know, this is this is the role that Gilberti is going to be utilized in, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, which is funny because he was spouting ideas saying, you know, wins and losses should matter and all this other stuff. And he actually had some good ideas, but it was it, just him getting made fun of. Was this on the YouTube page? No, I didn't. I didn't no. catch that. It, no. It's still crazy to see Disco. I mean, see, mm-hmm. I still know him by Disco. Um, I, you know, I do think I don't know his uh, his actual role with the company, but if he has a role in creative, I do think he can help in some parts. Yeah. Well, he did say he did work with Vince Russo. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think um, D'Lo Brown was brought in. I don't know if it was just for the Vegas tapings, but he's been utilized as well. Um, I think he was on Around the Ring this past week on Explosion. But see, the key thing, like, and we've talked about this even with the former regime, uh, well, not former regime, former creative team in uh, Sanjay and Abyss, mm-hmm. like, it doesn't matter who they bring in if, you know, obviously everything has to go through Don and, and Scott. So we'll never know what ideas are approved versus which ones are, aren't approved. So there could, they could be coming up with something, some kind of angle that would just, man, you know, set the wrestling world on fire, so to speak, and we never hear of it because maybe that's not Don's vision or right. Scott's vision. It's true. That is true. 
Uh, then we have KM and Falava backstage. They're obviously upset with what took place after their match. They had a really good fired up promo, and it seems like we're going to get another match between the two teams. Well, okay, some good follow up. That's good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And at least you know they addressed the post down or post match beat up, and yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen next week or a couple weeks from now. Uh, then we have Eli Drake and Eddie Edwards backstage. Eli tells Eddie that he told him so. He said, you didn't need this. And he points to Kenny. He says, all you needed was a little bit of that old Eddie to come back. He says, you won and I won. Eddie then, uh, Eli then brings up the idea of them going for tag team gold. And Eddie shoots him down, saying that Kenny is the only tag team partner he needs. And that isn't going to happen. Um, you know, Just doing good things between Eli and Eddie. And I think there's so much they could do. And introducing, I think, a team of the caliber of these two men to take on either LAX or the Lucha Brothers, um, I think that would do wonders because, as we've said, there's really no viable opponents for either team, whoever comes out on top. Yeah, and then not only that, I mean, you know, they got, there's good value to their names. I mean, both former world champions, um, you know, well, well received by the crowd. So they can, people can buy them as um, viable challengers. Mm -hmm. But I, I really, you know, and I, I think I'm just kind of accepting we probably won't see it. I just kind of wish they would just, just give it a shot and see with uh, KM and Fala. Like, I mean, I know with, with KM now, you know, we don't know how much longer he's going to be around. But, man, I just really think that would go over well. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, they could definitely have done the underdog story. Um, they had plenty of time to do it, but they never decided to because we had the OGs and LAX feud last, what, five months, something like that, or four months. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, no, I, you know, I, I, this could possibly be the start of an Eli Drake face turn. And that's interesting in its own because we know their building faces isn't uh, a top priority since turning everyone heel is the uh, go to route. Yep, that's the that's the the well, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yep. Uh, so then we find out next week Scarlett will announce who she is facing in her debut match. I guess that's going to be announced in the ring. And then we have Tessa Blanchard versus Delilah Doom. This took place after Tessa beat down both her and Alicia Edwards last week. Uh, Tessa ends up picking up the victory after hitting the buzzsaw, but uh, they put on a good match. You know, Delilah was able to show off her talent, and they were able to build off what had happened last week. So. They did a good job with it, even if it's just a placeholder until Tessa eventually does something else. And see, I would prefer her in this role where they just kind of have her just wrecking people in the division up until she's ready for you know her next feud. This is the way that you keep a former champion relevant, not having them face you know people who are retired. <laughs> yeah, coming back again. Was this going to be number two or three? Yeah, I, I don't even know, but I think the follow up with that because they like I I had to remind myself after watching that that they uh, uh you know they're gonna be have feuding with one another. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, like I said, it's I just don't see who it's gonna benefit afterward. Yeah, I mean, it, and that's the thing with they got a, some of these matches. I wish that there were matches where both people can benefit, win or loss. But when you have something like that, like what Tessa beating Gail, what does that prove? And then if Gail beats Tessa, and then it's like, wait, well, what, what? What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, this will be this will be Madison Rain all over again. And then all of a sudden, oh. Gail's got a title shot at Slam Anniversary or something. Yeah, who are you telling? <laughs> yeah. All right, and then uh, Brian Cage is interviewed by uh, Melissa. He's asked if he can coexist with Johnny Impact tonight. He says they're going to take care of Mo Moose and Cross, and then Johnny will have to live up to his promise and give Cage that one-on-one -on -one title shot. So they're just kind of uh, reiterating. He's basically reiterating what Johnny said earlier on in the evening. Um, then we see Rosemary backstage, and she is wondering what James Mitchell has up his sleeve. We see Kiara and Jordan Grace show up. They offer to team up with Rosemary. Rosemary says, this is not your fight. Then Kiara gives her reasons why this obviously is her fight. Then Rosemary agrees and says, once the bunny is returned to our side, you have to back off. So I guess we will probably see some sort of six-woman tag match between, I guess, the teams or the sides. 
I'm so over this stuff. I get, <laughs> I I get, you know, as far as with the rosemary inclusion, but I'm just so over it. I just want this thing to end. I mean, give us rosemary and Hallie, and then you know, let the rest of these girls, you know, compete. You know, because we're looking at this division, like who's next up for Taya? You know, is Taya just gonna be stuck with whatever Johnny's doing? Like that's what they should be building towards. Yeah, it's true, and we, we I mean, I think you had said it that. Taya's run is just going to kind of go nowhere because they haven't built any opponent up for her. Yep. And that's just how it feels with a lot of the divisions. I mean, outside of the world title, because you have four viable contenders, but outside of the main title picture, there's no one they're building on the side. Yeah, it just, <clears throat> like I said, once again, I mean, you try to get so many and like I think sometimes too, and the thing the thing that they've got away from, and I wish they'd go back to is you know doing little tournaments, you know number one contendership tournaments. That way, some of these matches, these random matches we have, at least there's some purpose behind it. You know, mm-hmm. you're building towards something. You know, but I don't, I don't know. You know, we're we're just fans. I mean, you know, we like the product and whatnot, and you know, it's just it's really just suggestions. I mean. Who knows? I mean, I'm sure trying to put together a wrestling show is very, very difficult. Oh, yeah. There's so many moving parts. Uh, Gilberti did bring that up also when he was in the management's office about some sort of, I think, X Division tournament or something like that. Which, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I always love <laughs> tournaments, so <laughs> whatever. Uh, then we had Ethan Page versus Zach War. Just Wentz, I guess that's what he's going by now. Um, I must say, every time Ethan Page is on TV, he's looking better and better. I know he's talking about dieting and stuff like that, but he has cut a decent amount of weight since he uh, debuted with the company. Uh, we see him end up getting into it with uh, one of the NFL players in the crowd or the Hall of Famer or something like that. And then Wentz ends up picking up the victory with a uh, UFO cutter. So... Did this do anything for anybody? <laughs> you know, with the weight thing, uh, you know who else looks like they've trimmed down a tad bit? Uh, Fala. I don't know if you had noticed. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I would say, like, you know, good by them. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I know nowadays with wrestling, like, it's not about the, you know, the big bodies and whatnot. But, you know, these guys, they take, you know, pride in their craft that, you know, they want to be in the best shape possible. But, yeah, this is another one, like, I'm where I'm confused because with the Rascals, you know, I was of the mindset that, that uh Wentz and uh Xavier were the tag, you know, tag team. And mm-hmm. then you got uh Miguel or Trey. I guess they they're yeah, they, just Trey now. I just think. Trey, you know, yeah. being the singles guy. And uh um, you know, I get it, you know, they want to give him a win, but with Ethan, what are they doing with Ethan Page? I, uh-huh. I really thought he was a guy that, you know, was part of, you know, they're gonna need some stars that they're gonna want to build. And I thought he was tailored for that role, you know, given, you know, the time and work that they put into it and you know you just every other week you just have him losing like yeah (laughs) he's got all the tools it seems like he's got a great look he's solid in the ring he seems to be good on the mic i i I don't i don't get it but again you know going back to what we've talked about it's that mid-card title you really need yeah i mean (sighs) And then to let alone, too, when you look at, like, the X Division now, once again, what really is it? I mean, it used to be, you know, it's all about no limits. So, you know, people doing dives and stuff. We see dives almost every other match. So, (laughs) once again, what is it? (laughs) I was actually going to bring that up in the uh, KM Ba and uh, Reno Scum match. It was, like, the only match that we've seen with not a high flyer in it. Yep, that's true. <laughs> so it was a little strange there. But yeah, no, I mean, and I'm sure we're going to get Ethan Page versus Willie Mack again, so. <laughs> hey, you know what? I've seen some of the comment boards, you know, that's, and like I said, is once again, I think on the survey, I might actually have to say that, like, they're giving us the same matches over and over. Like, it might not be week in, week out, but what we see this week, we might see some iteration of it in a couple right. weeks. Like, once again, it's okay to point that out to Impact. Like, give us some fresh matchups, right. you know? Well, I mean, probably a year or so ago, maybe a little longer, that's what they were all about. This is a first-time ever match. We've never seen that before, so on and so forth. Um, but I meant to bring this up earlier when we were talking about Willie Mack versus Jake Christ. Um, it was a couple weeks ago, and I know we talked about this offline, but uh, I think it was during Uncaged after Willie's victory over Ethan Page. Uh, we saw OVE follow him into the locker room, and then we never got anything 
of that, and they could have simply built this match or that match off of what had took place there, but they didn't. Yeah. I mean, you know, some of their storylines are, are, you know, I give them credit for some of the stuff that they invest as far as building a story too, but I think sometimes it's the continuity. Like, I think when you have an angle like that, you can't wait two and three weeks to follow it up, Mm -hmm. especially if the talent appears on TV. It's one thing if that talent hasn't appeared, then you can continue it. But to go two weeks, you know, he's appeared, and then all of a sudden, hey, they got a match together. Like, what? You know? Yeah. But then we see Tommy Dreamer and Glenn Gilberti backstage. They have a little back and forth. Dreamer tries to get Gilberti to deal with... um, forget what he said uh but it was it ended up being the anthem owl who was in a room so he just kind of pushes gilberti into the room we hear the owl attacking him and yeah that was that <laughs> i didn't even uh, know that owl was still around <laughs> uh yeah apparently uh then we find out that ace austin will make his debut next week um we get a little video from sammy callahan saying that he isn't the villain here but he he's actually the hero he says he did everything rich needed in order to succeed Rich says that Sammy uses people, but Sammy says Rich used his house, his money for food and everything, and then he turned his back on him. He did what he did in Mexico because he loves him, and it's time to welcome him to the OVE family. So more good stuff between them. At least, you know, they have a story to work with. Oh, definitely. And this is something that I will say. I know sometimes we talk about them doing stuff to death with certain uh matchups and angles but if this is kind of like a long obviously i don't want it too too long but a long feud uh between the two i'm I'm on board with it like i always like when you got x division guys um in storylines yeah and, and they have the history there so i mean it's, it's the perfect thing to utilize as a real storyline and i think it it works well um and uh, hopefully the payoff between the between the two of them is good too i i can't imagine it won't be yeah of course. Uh, then we have Melissa interviewing Killer Cross and Moose. Cross says that they're not okay right now. Johnny made sure neither of them won last week after he made the matchup. He says they aren't going to allow Johnny and Kate or and Cage to win tonight. Moose says whoever Johnny promises a title shot to, they're going to take them out. So, yeah, they're building to this match all night long, which it is your main event picture. So I guess that does make the most sense. Yeah, um, you know, I, I didn't catch this promo on YouTube. How did uh, Kate, I mean, I Kate, I'm sorry, uh, Cross and Moose, how were they? You know, since I know they had faced each other. Were they like, everything was fine or were they? No, 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 they, they, they were a little bit at odds. Um, oh, okay. Cross obviously being pissed and Moose, he, he made some comment that he's like, Johnny was like the, the chick at a bar, but Johnny's not a chick. He's ugly or something like that. He was going on and on. But uh, Moose was dressed ridiculous as usual. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, no. I mean, it, it, it was all right. Nothing, nothing new that the other two didn't say. You know. You know they they pimped this out as being the main event picture, but if you really look deep, I mean, is everyone involved or the other? I should say in Cross and Moose, are they really viable contenders, or is it really about Johnny and Brian Cage? Oh yeah, that's exactly what it's about. <laughs> and so then when. Again, that just brings us back to the point of where do we go after Brian Cage and Johnny Impact feud? Well, I mean, the way that it, it look the the way that it's looking like, whatever all this, whatever is going to happen between now and you know this set of tapings and next, it's going to lead all the way up to Rebellion. Mm-hmm. And um, well, let's get into the match, and then I'll, I'll make a. There was a point that I wanted to make right. about Johnny. Well, since we're talking about Rebellion anyway, we see LAX backstage, and they said they did what they did because they were provoked. Makes sense. They were disrespected, and that's why it happened. Uh, Conan says he's going to get them another rematch, and he's going to handle it next week. So I guess we're going to get another rematch, probably saved for Rebellion. Once again, this is one of the weirdest hill turns I've seen because (laughs) I think I've, I've talked about it probably every other day. So explain to me. LAX is healed because they retaliated after Lucha Brothers got in their faces. Well, I don't know if, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know if I would necessarily call them heel, but I guess that's the impression they're trying to give. Not them, the company. Yeah, so it just, you know, and this is just a way to 
you know, because it's been well received that they have good chemistry. But, you know, it's just reaching burnout levels. I know I know I'm already burnt out. I want to see somebody else. You know, why not have Lucha Brothers, you know, with the proper build facing the Rascals or facing Cam or Fowler, but, you know, facing somebody. I mean, hell, I don't even take OVE and I know they don't really have the value that, you know, they once had, but something different. But, you know, what Impact can't be doing just because you figure Rebellion is... I mean, I know it's in April, but it's yeah, it's almost towards the end of April. Like you can't extend this stuff all the way to the pay per view. I mean, I mean, we'll drag you know drag this stuff all the way to the pay per view because then it's gonna look when you look back on it is we're really gonna be getting rematches from Homecoming, right? Mm -hmm. And that's gonna be hard to sell a pay per view um, with three matches (laughs) from three months ago. Exactly. But all right, so we'll talk about the main event now. Brian Cage, Johnny Impact versus Killer Cross and Moose. Um, I, I mean, I I really enjoyed what they did here. Um, since we actually got to see Moose and Killer Cross on top, um, we got to see. Well, we saw Cage and Johnny working together well early on, and Johnny went to do his little spinning leg drop thing, um, and then he all of a sudden starts to clench his neck in pain. He's barely able to get over to Cage, which is funny because Cross is just sitting there watching him as he just like scoots back over to him. Um, so Cage finally gets in. It's two on one. The refs come to attend Johnny. Uh, Cross ends up hitting Cage with the belt outside the ring. He busts Cage open, um, which is funny because I was like, oh, man, machines don't bleed. And then all of a sudden I hear Cross yelling, you're just a man, Cage. So they did a good little spot there. Um, we see Taya come down. Cage is trying to get the tag at this point, you know, kind of like, what the hell, uh, as Johnny's being attended to. Moose and Cross hit a nice combo of a spear with a straight jacket, and Cage passes out from blood loss. So, it, I mean, it, I, I liked the outcome of the match. I thought it was good, but uh, I don't know what we're what the whole thing is leading to with Johnny. I just feel the excellent you know, the excellent layout of this match and even, you know, the ending is going to be overshadowed between the Johnny and Brian Cage stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why I was just saying, you know, even though you got Moose and Killer Cross in the wings, like, you know, they're really a non-factor. I mean, really, when you really think about it, and I had mentioned this, I said, said, said to you, I said, you know, they ended homecoming with Killer Cross th- uh, tossing Ty off the stage, okay? And there, after that, they really didn't follow up with that. I know th- there was a couple matches and stuff, but then we and then we get back to Brian, you know, Brian Cage and stuff. So like that's the big story that they want to tell between them and uh, Johnny and Brian Cage. And if that's the story they want to tell, I fear they're gonna try to drag that all the way to Rebellion. Mm-hmm. And I think with Johnny, you know, you, you know, like I said, we've talked about this before. A lot of people believe turning him heel. I really don't think turning him heel is gonna make a difference one way or the other. If anything, that's just going to prolong um, the inevitable title change that a lot of people want to see. Oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> There's no denying it at this point. But but I really thought if there was a time to do the to, to do a, um, a hill turn, it should have been at homecoming. I mean, mm-hmm. before they would have went with the uh, I mean, post homecoming before with uh, before they did the killer cross tossing Taya. I think you could have done that, and then. I really think people wanted to see a title change between now and the pay-per-view. But instead, you know, if they're going to go this route, then obviously we already know, you know, they're going to build this whole story about, you know, Brian Cage constantly getting screwed and, yep. you know, finally leading up to rebell- rebellion and stuff. So, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I appreciate them adding a story to this now, but it's just like, man, sometimes it's just, you know, and even I even say with Johnny Impact's title win, I felt like it came at the wrong time only because there was a time where they cut it. They should have just went with it. And I think sometimes Impact, what they do is they don't strike when the iron's hot. They kind of wait too little too late. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because they had the opportunity to do a program between Johnny and Aries last year uh, when they I think they had the match at one of the, uh, you know, uh, TV specials. But that was just to set up for Aries and uh, Alberto, and we all know how that ended. <laughs> you know, it's just it's just those things that I think with Cage, one of the 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 worries, and I had made made a comment about this on um on the Impact Lounge. I said, you know, 
what's going to end up happening is when they do put the belt on Cage, there's going to come a point people are going to want Cage to turn heel. Instead of everyone turning heel, why doesn't you know why doesn't Impact do a better job of booking their face champions? Right. You know, it, it doesn't take it doesn't take much. And I think just like in Johnny's case, in in I think we talked about this too. I think with Johnny, he's going to appeal more to a younger fan base. So, and I understand now with them being outside of the impact zone, you know, a lot of the fans now, they're more, you know, the 18 to 30 and up dem- demographic and stuff. So, yeah, a lot of the cheesy stuff they're not going to buy into. It's no different than Hogan. You think about a lot of us who might have grown up on Hulk Hogan talking about eating your vitamins. Yeah, right. when you're six and seven here and that <laughs> stuff, you're like jumping up. Yeah, but you're, you know, you're a grown ass man here and that. You're like, Hell out of here about some damn vitamins, you know. Well, so that that was a heel turn that did work, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely, definitely. So, um, but yeah, I I just feel like that's a thing, and I just hate that Killer Cross and Moose, they're just kind of just being used as you know ba- the background for the bigger story and right. Johnny versus Brian Cage. Yeah, which you know because it seemed like this was a tactic for just Johnny to weasel out of the title match. <laughs> But, yep. Um, all right. So we had a couple questions from last week's podcast. Um, we had the JR Rock Freak. He said, This may be a random question, but do you guys think LAX and the Lucha Bros are hurting the tag division? Both teams are great, but they're taking up the number one and two spot, and there seems to be no room for anyone else. Um, yeah, that's pretty much exactly how we feel. Yeah, I feel that's on management because I think, and we've even seen this even before, I think, I don't know if Lucha Brothers were around then, but we've seen when they went through that period where LAX had lost the titles to Steiner and Eli, who mm-hmm. then lost the belts to uh, E&Z, Z&E. Yeah. Yeah, Z&E. and uh, then right away LAX gets them back. Mm-hmm. Like management has a problem of, of you know, some of their former champions how to how to uh, build them and make you know still make them relevant without them being in the title picture so i think that's kind of on management like personally oh. i don't think lucha brothers needed the titles i wouldn't mm-hmm. put the titles on them only there, because there is more opportunity with them as single stars unless you know maybe that's the thing though because we do see them as a tag team in every company so maybe that's how they want to be booked yeah, it could be, but I, I just don't think they should have had the titles only because them working every company like that. And look, I know things happen, but I mean, sometimes you can, um, what's the word to say? You can bring things upon yourself. Mm. So, you know, you're pushing them, you know, put them, put them in a prominent role on your TV product, you know, have, you know, heaven forbid they get injured and stuff that changes everything, you know? Yeah. So, so I really think, and I, I agree, agree with this, with this question, but I think it's more of management, not taking the chance with other talents and stuff. And, yeah. you know, instead using those talents as enhancements. So it's like, okay, if LAX loses to Lucha Brothers, then okay, for them to get their win back, they go and beat the Rascals. Like, no, you don't use talent that you have plans for as right. enhancement talent. And another thing is, is we're not only seeing LAX versus the Lucha Brothers in Impact. They've also been advertised for six-man tags with both teams and other promotions and stuff like that. And then people are like, oh, I already saw this here. Why am I going to watch Impact to see this again? Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And we had another comment from the Chris Steele show, and he says... We talked about the explosion moving to Twitch last week. He says, I say ditch around the the ring and classic match. This could be replaced with the GWN top five for three explosion matches. And instead of taping explosion matches at the impact tapings, they should instead tape them at the Twitch and one night only events. You could see newer, fresher matches that way while also utilizing the open door policy that Demore is always talking about. And around the ring could be a YouTube exclusive. Um, yeah, no, I, I think there, there's definitely some good points there. Um, I think around the ring would definitely make a better. Um, yeah, I mean, they could make it into a Twitch show or something like that, because there was originally talk that they were going to have Twitch shows that were behind the scenes and stuff like that with the talent. Um, but putting it on YouTube would be good as well. And uh, we, we've talked about it. And the only way they're really going to be able to make new stars is by utilizing Explosion to its full you know, potential. See, I think 
I I think the thing with them taping because I know they normally tape explosions when they do the actual tapings. I feel like that's the only way that they could, if they wanted to, kind of uh, incorporate it with things that are you know happening in impact. You know, impact. Like I think then that would probably be the best way to do it because with the twitch, I think with the twitch, I don't I forget how often that they happen, but I mean we've seen like you know they're. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I, I guess that that is a good idea. It sounds like, but I, I would think it'd probably be easier if you were just trying to keep keep up with the storylines mm-hmm. than you know ta- um, taping it when you tape it. But then once again, too, if you're having like new talent, you know, we all see in different promotions. Usually, when when they're trying to build, you know, any promotion trying to build a talent, they're always facing a local name or enhancement talent. So I guess that would kind of work. But yeah, definitely, what they need to do if they want to treat it as a second show, and I mean. Obviously, for them to put it on on Twitch like that and make it make it be known when everyone mm-hmm. knew it was on the GWN, I mean that is kind of like their way of saying this is their de facto second show, and definitely yeah. needs some revamping. Absolutely, and you know that's a good way to build lower level feuds in order to, you know, let people make their way up the card. Um, but yeah, I mean, like instead of the GWN flashback, they could just take a look at a recent Twitch or one night only match that, you know, may have spotlighted new talent and then just asking the crowd what they think of them and stuff like that. Because I, I still don't know how many people actually fill out the surveys and things like that. If it's just the the diehard fans and, you know, if they're already accepting everything, then what's the point in changing things? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions that you want us to answer, leave them in the comments section below, and we'll be sure to talk about them next week. So you have anything else, Ro? Yeah, let me just add real quick because I got a couple of comments. Um, some you know people have asked, you know, as well as some of you know, you know, I was on the uh, Impact Lounge. Um, you know, b- between Adam and I, the Adam and Rose show was happened. I think up until you know the big change to moved on pursuit. Um, obviously, and I've stated here before, you know, I only, my only form of watching impact is on YouTube. I don't know how Adam's watching, but mainly it's just the the thing that I just wanted to clarify, you know, I'm still doing that with him is just, it's a time thing right now. So, you know, luckily I, you know, met Keith and Keith gave me the opportunity to jump on here with him and review impact. So, um, until then I'll be doing this. And I mean, if the Adam Rose show comes back, I'll just be doing both. And um, I kind of miss doing the reviews if, as for some of you who, you know, tune into the Adam and Rose show, we really kind of just dissect, you know, different things that are happening with impact. So this kind of gives me an opportunity of best of both worlds. So, um, yeah, as far as the Adam and Rose show, um, you know, it's still kind of on a brief hiatus. But once we work things out, then, you know, we should be dropping something real soon. All right. Good. If it comes back, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, you know, I really appreciate having you on the show. Uh the single review is it's tough and it's nice to have somebody to talk back and forth about impact. So I guess that is all for this week. Thank you everyone for checking out our podcast and until next time, don't forget to like share and subscribe. Thanks guys. Bye.